Hello, I didn't know it went so quickly. I was expecting Crowdcast to have issues. Um, hello, welcome to sharing five objects in your remote workspace. Um, so this is a thing that um, my company Motif did at the remote camp. Emil Say, who's on, actually did one that was just so much fun that halfway through I messaged Louise and said, I want to do this at TLDcast. This seems really fun. So because we're all, not all of us, because many of us are working from home and many of us actually honestly already worked from home or worked remotely. Um, in my case, I wasn't always home, but I was definitely mostly remote. So I had to carry a select group of things with me and they were kind of the objects in my remote office, but my remote office was my backpack and I would just always have it with me. Um, now I'm home, I have not touched my backpack in weeks. I actually looked at it the other day and missed it. Um, so I was thinking of the things that I just am happy to have in my workspace now. The things that um, I just like to be near, the things that make me kind of just remember moments or, um, you know, things that maybe not may, may not be work related, but are still valuable to me. So I will um, really quickly share mine. Um, I think I'm just gonna share my whole screen. So good luck to me. Um, so I'm going to share mine. And then if anyone has um, anything they would like to share, please just let me know in chat and we will bring you on because I would love to see everyone's stuff. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen. Let me know in chat if you can see it. Um, there we go. Okay. So I'm assuming everyone can see it because now that I don't, now that I have this, I don't think I can look at Crowdcast anymore. Okay. So um, the first thing I have is this poster. It came with, I think, a vinyl, um, a Father John Misty vinyl. It's actually behind me on the wall there. And it is one of my favorite um, just pictures that I have in my house because there's so much to look at. Um, that there's always something new. Every time you look at it, you're like, oh, is it, what's that little fat police officer doing there? Um, it was also really fun when Josie was a baby. Um, we used it a lot for recognizing shapes and recognizing colors and things like that. So I always, um, when I look at it, I always just remember all of those moments with her. Um, you can also see her off to the side, that's Josie. Um, so that's kind of the art that I have in my office. There's a little bit, this room actually has a lot of um, concert posters. We, um, before I had a daughter, my partner and I used to go to a lot of live shows. I know a lot of you guys know that. Um, and we would kind of take the posters off and um, come home and frame them. So we have just a lot of posters from shows that we went to um, in here. The ones we have up now are um, Queens of the Stone Age, which is one of my favorite bands, um, the Afghan Wigs, and a Katy Perry poster that is my partner's. Um, and then there's a um, How to Destroy Angels poster up there as well. So this is kind of our um, Josie's room slash our music poster room. And because most of our music posters are kind of terrifying, she grew up with a really healthy respect for horror art like this. Um, so my next one is I, I popped in a couple of things here from my remote um, work lifestyle. And this is one of them. This is my um, journal. And I didn't show a page because I didn't know which pages I uh, could show. Right now, actually, there are a lot of um, Josie drawings in it and post-its with letters and sight words that have managed to make their way in. So that is a new a new aspect of the remote work life, but um, that notebook I carry around with me because I was sick of having um, to work on a project and then realizing, oh crap, all of my notes for that project are on my desk at home, but now I'm at the office. And so I got in the habit of just carrying that notebook with me. And now that I work from home, I carry it from room to room. Whenever I take my laptop downstairs or to the patio, I take that notebook with me. It kind of comes as a set. Um, and 
the, let's do this one. This is, um, I believe I have him next to me. This is a little monkey tchotchke that I got from um, Venice Beach a couple of years ago. And I had kind of forgotten about it. I, it just lived up on a shelf and I always loved it. It's, you know, a thing that you get, they just buy en masse and you buy for 10 bucks. But I love it and it reminds me of, you know, vacations. We would always, we always stay at Venice Beach and then kind of go around LA when we visit. And it's one of my favorite places. And then I um, had forgotten and then Josie found it and just started to, um, she took it as one of her toys, but she couldn't um, clearly describe it. So she would always ask, where's my skeleton dressed as a gorilla holding a monkey? So the name of it is the skeleton holding a gorilla, skeleton dressed like a gorilla holding a monkey. And that's Josie. She wanted to be part of the um, holding, holding it for the picture. Um, that's also a lot of marker that is now part of my desk because of this uh, work from home. Um, the next one is a cookbook. And this is, um, I have a lot of cookbooks. I really like cooking from cookbooks and I really like cooking. And part of um, working from home for me is being able to cook dinner. Um, sometimes starting early, putting something in like a crock pot or pressure cooker, and then just letting it cook all day. That's one of the huge um, values to me of working from home and of this kind of everyone working from home time. Um, so the last one, this is also, by the way, just one of my favorite cookbooks. It is mostly, most of my cookbooks are like one pan cookbooks. This is like a one pan cookbook, but a sheet pan. Um, there's one recipe in here that is um, this peanut butter chicken that's just, you know, peanut, butter, peanut sauce and chicken and broccolini, and it always comes out perfectly. And it's something that um, you can just put everything in a bag and leave it for right before dinner and then dump it on a sheet pan. It's perfect. Um, and then the last one is also a relic of my remote office, which is um, hand lotion or any kind of lotion. I traveled a lot last year and I traveled um, kind of geographically with no rhyme or reason. So I would be in, um, in one week I was in Salt Lake City and then I was in Roanoke, Virginia and then I was home. And I'm from the East Coast. I am from the land of humidity. So I don't usually have a lot of lotion. I'll have hand lotion and I'll use it sometimes, but I'm not, like I don't have to use lotion every day because the air is very, very wet here. So every time I would go to somewhere in the mountains or somewhere in the desert, or even you know, a place that's in the mountains like Roanoke, I, my skin would immediately just get super dry. So I started always carrying lotion with me. And if I didn't have it, I would have to buy it anyway. So now there's just a lot of lotion around my house, but that's um, not something that I need at my current work from home, but that is one of my kind of work remotely relics. Um, so those are my five objects. Now I can actually see the chat. Um, so I know Emil says here, hi. Um, and I want to um, bring someone in to, oh, I do have a couple of questions. Okay, perfect. Does Josie have a poster, Emmy? Um, you know, that's kind of her favorite poster. Um, she doesn't have a poster now that I think of it. She would probably appreciate one, huh? Um, Josie, do you have a poster? No. Do you want one? No. <laughs> she doesn't have any interest in a poster, apparently. I'm sorry, Emmy. You can send her a poster from Argentina. Um, and what do I like to cook the most? Which is, um, this isn't even active cooking, but my favorite thing to do is to make pork shoulder in a pressure cooker and then just use that in every meal for the rest of the week, um, which isn't the healthiest way to cook, but I really like batch cooking. So I like cooking every day, but I also like making just a lot of food to freeze. Um, those don't blend well. I just have a lot of food all the time, but yes, I agree. Every home needs a pressure cooker, especially if you work from home, because it's like magic. You can take a break in the middle of the afternoon, 
put stuff in a pressure cooker and then it's done. It's just your dinner's ready. Um, I don't do a lot of full meals in a pressure cooker. I know you can. I have an instant pot, so I know you can just throw everything you own in it and it'll make a delicious meal. But I don't usually do it that way. I usually make um, all the, you know, cheap meat that I want to heat. But I use the pressure cooker for that. Um, so, yeah, tell me that um, I was thinking as I was putting hand lotion on it, uh, on the list that I have used so much more. I'm so glad I have it. So it actually is, I guess you're right, a part of this current work from home because my hands are so dry all the time. Um, I have, you know, like I had to get shea butter, soap. Um, my, yeah, it's terrible. It's like, yeah, my hands are not lovely. Um, but I'm not sick, so I guess it works. Um, oh, Deborah, my, um, so my daughter is allergic to eggs, so we never have them in the house. And I've never been able to make them in the pressure cooker. And I really, really want to. I might have to get some because I do really want to try that. And the six-minute eggs look so good. Um, so, Tavi, did you want to come in um, and share anything? And I know Luis might also have some things. So who would like to go first? And if everyone, I can just cycle people in and out. Um, Louise has the controls, so you can cycle whoever in and out. So if everyone can find um, an object and let us know when they have one, we can just cycle you in to talk about that one. Um, okay, so Louise, can you let Toddy in and then we will chat? I'm excited because I haven't, I feel like I haven't talked to Toddy in way too long. Hello. Hi, hi there, and I don't think my video is working, so. Oh, well, we have sure. a Toddy over there. Yeah, that's so weird. Can you guys hear me okay? We can, yes. Yeah, okay. Well, and I have I had um pictures of some of my things that I really like and I'm like, how do I share them now without a window? I wonder if I can share mm -hmm. my let me see if I can um, share a screen. I can I can try. Um yeah. Actually, let me go ahead and see if I can share because I let me switch over. Okay, that works. All right, cool. So, um, yeah, these were pictures in my my Gmail window. So, if you guys can <laughs> hear me, I'll I'll tell you about some of my favorite things in my office. <laughs> um, I I've been working from home for a very long time, actually, um, like almost continuously since. So, I guess about 2016. So um, I, as you guys may or may not know, we lived in Colorado for the last four and a half years, and then we came back to New England. Um, so we were originally in Massachusetts for 20 years, and now we're back living in New Hampshire. So I have a, a new office, and so I got a chance to go back through and redecorate with some things that are some of my favorite things. Um, and I'm a huge music person. Um, Luis knows this. We've had some interesting conversations about um, some people who have actually passed away from COVID-19 recently, one which was John Prine. And so I have a ton of music stuff in my office. Um, I have photos that I've shot for like record covers um, years and years ago that I have framed on the walls. Um, I have a really uh, favorite artist and that's John Butler Trio out of Australia. Um, so I have like signed pieces from him that are on shelves. Um, I just, I snapped some pictures of some of the shelves in my office just to share like some of my favorite things. I'm, I'm also a big doggy person. So there's a ton of dog photos in my office. If I took pictures of everything in here, you guys would be here all day long. Um, but I'll go through a couple of things here. Um, Luis, you might recognize this. Um, it is a note that you sent to me on the back is a handwritten note. Um, and so this has actually been hanging out in my office now for, I don't know, almost a year or so, but I liked it. And I have a feeling that Luis's um, son may have put this, done this and Luis used it as a note and sent it to me, which I thought was pretty cool. But I keep a lot of this kind of stuff in my office because it's really meaningful to me. And I have a, a lot of cards and handwritten notes from friends and stuff. So anyway. Um, yeah. Also, please. <laughs> so this is the diversity in my music. Um, my daughter loves the band Sleeping with Sirens, 
which is, you know, much more to her taste. Um, but she's gone to see them a couple times in person. And this particular album actually was from a show that we went to see down in Long Island. Um, it was a pop-up show. And so I ended up with the album and I brought it home with me. Um, I really enjoyed the show, actually. Yeah, I, I have a diverse taste in music, obviously, because I have Dave Brubeck live at Storyville sitting right next to it, which um, is sentimental to me because uh, a piece of that record actually was live broadcasted by my friend, Fred Taylor, who just passed away at 86 years old this last fall um, and he was an iconic um, person in the music scene in the Boston East Coast area. He kind of he actually kind of got Jay Leno started um, and and James Taylor and some of the other interesting folks, uh, Nora, Nora Jones, um, I mean like all kinds of interesting people over the years and so Fred, Fred actually had a hand in producing some of that Dave Brubeck record. <laughs> Anyway, uh, the picture in the middle is my husband and our 25th anniversary, and then um, one of my favorite books, which came um, from Sam, actually, which is Seth Godin. So, and this, I don't know if anybody has any idea what this is. Um, I, I have no clue. It is the carpet um, pattern for the Portland airport that they removed. There was a big deal <laughs> when they removed the carpet pattern in the Portland airport and put in new carpeting. And so Oregonians and Portlanders being who they are, they're weird. They, they started printing up t-shirts and coasters and all kinds of things with the carpet, and pat, carpet pattern for the PDX airport. So this is my coffee coaster. Um, mm -hmm. And probably one of my most favorite things of all in my office, um, this was given to me when I separated from my robot in 2012. So um, I was the lead trainer for this particular robot for the Army for almost four years. Um, it's called the Sugby, um, small and unmanned ground vehicle. And uh, it's the robot that soldiers use over in Afghanistan, um, essentially for reconnaissance, but um, it also has a manipulator arm on it for uh, basically, you know, getting rid of EODs um, in, in remote locations and it's remotely controlled. So uh, when I separated from my robot, this was one of the gifts and it's it's been on my desk ever since. So anyway, just figured I'd share a couple of things. So yeah, you can see how awkward and strange I am. So. <laughs> That's really I really like the um, kind of company presents that you get for anniversaries. I really like when they have, you know, something to do with the company. I worked for a company that worked for all the airlines and um, we got, you know, everything was kind of aviation themed. So when you look at it, you it's quicker to make that connection and to yeah. remember all of those things. Yeah. Um, so, oh. Emmy, so um, the way to share on the screen this, because it's Crowdcast and not Zoom, you have to kind of come up on screen. Um, so did, if you have something you want to share, I wanted to bring Mark in if he's ready um, cool. to bring things in. But first, does anyone have any questions for um, Toddy? Thank you for sharing those. It's funny that we both had um, a lot of music in ours. And I think um, I have a feeling Louise might as well. Um, oh, there's an episode of 99% Invisible about the carpet pattern. Oh, that's funny. I love it. It's such a great story. Portlandia, uh, the whole show of Portlandia is really funny, but it's it's like so about like Portland and the people there. It just cracks me up. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> you, that's, you're funny. So you saw a picture of me with brown hair. <laughs> oh, I hide no. those now because you know the whole the soul salt and pepper is my trademark. <laughs> so, cool. Hey Emmy. Well, thank you. Hey. Hi. So let me introduce you really quickly. Um, so Emmy is a storyteller down in Argentina who works with us a bit. Um, I was excited to have her on here because she has she's you know, always been in the storytelling kind of marketing space and has been helping a little bit with um, some instructional design, some e-learning writing as well. Um, so welcome, Emmy. Thank um, you. So what, what did you want to share? Oh, I want to share, I don't know if you can see on the screen, I will I will share it alive, in a live, not in a photo. Can okay. See? A little bit, but you're super blurry for me. Yes. It's very yeah. blurry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there. Yeah. I can see a little lantern. Yeah, you guess it. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Oh, sorry. This is a lamp. And I want to share this because this is um, a little object I have here in my table work. I have two spaces of work at home. I'm, I'm, I always work at home since a long time ago also. And I have two spaces uh, in my living room. <laughs> that is one on the table and here in this big table. So this, like, this is a light that I never, 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 ever, ever uh, light on, you know? For me, it's funny because I, I just once light it and never more. So these days I was thinking about to light it. I don't know what's your opinion about it. Mm. But I was guessing like, I have this all the time with me. Why I'm why I'm not using like a lighter? Why is an object? So mm -hmm. that's a question maybe for all of us. But I was like, just thinking out loud and I was I wanted to, to share these thoughts with you. Why I have this, why it's not important to me, and what I don't light it on when the light is gone. That's I um so I work with candles a lot and I have candles in my house that I just don't like to light. I think they're just pretty the way they are. I don't want to light them. Um, okay. And that might be one, but that's that's I really like lanterns. So in the chat, um, I feel like there are people who work with candles and people who don't. I'm a people. I'm a person who works with candles. Um, it's I don't focus very well, but I'm also very scared of setting fire to my house. So if I light a candle, I can't leave the room. Um, so it's a, my, um, you know, everyone has their own ways of dealing with ADHD. That's mine. Um, so I usually get these, um, hey, Joe. <laughs> There's an earthquake next to me. I usually get the, um, I really like wood wick candles because they make a crackling sound and they sound like you're working in a room with fire, even though you're not. Um, yeah. So I, especially when it, I'm working at night, I usually have a candle, but even during the day, I, I prefer working with a candle next to me. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So I say you light it today and then send a picture. Send a picture to us on Twitter. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Um, so you also shared, I'm gonna ask in the chat if anyone has anything they'd like to share, let us know, we can pop you in. But I wanted to share that we learned about your two workspaces. Um, you usually sit in the one where there's not currently a cat. Uh, so where's your cat now? Oh, my cat, I will. I, I have to go to find her right now. I have two of them, <laughs> wait for it. Mine opened my closet door behind me. That's one of the things about working remotely is you have a cat added to the mix. Two cats in my case. Um, okay, so Mark, did you wanna share anything? Um, and um, Joe, I saw you. Um, oh yeah, it would be lunchtime for you. Actually, Joe, one of the other things I had as a um, possibility is that I haven't had this gin yet that Bethany brought for us. Um, and I keep it with me because I like to, um, you know, remember the time we hung out. Um, hello, little kitty. Hello, this is Mamo Toretto. Yeah, <laughs> little, little girl. She's 10 years. Oh. And she's always like here. She's like it. And she, then I will send you a picture for you, Christine, to share. She's yeah. always with the, with the other teddy bears. She likes to, to rest with the teddy bears. And, oh. and she likes that. And recently she was with it. And she's like, so cute. So yeah, yeah. yeah. so fluffy. Yes, so fluffy. That's the word. So yeah. this is this is Mama Tredo. Nice to meet oh, you. Hi. Say hello to everyone. Yay. <laughs> we have Thank one you. cuddly cat and one fluffy cat, and the fluffy cat is not the cuddly cat. And I really wish it was the other way around. Yeah, yeah. She's so fluffy and she's so funny. <laughs> And she doesn't care anything, so I love that of her. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have one that actually Josie started picking up and caring. <laughs> She's yeah. just dealing with it. Oh, there she is. Hi, Pixel. This is Pixel. She looks mad all the time, but she's not. <laughs> um, <laughs> Listen to her. Yeah, she's. She was kind of mad that time. Yes, she's, I, she's the cuddliest one, but not the most cuddly. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Okay, so I think Luis is going to come in the chair. Thank you so much, Emmy. I really appreciate you popping in. I really appreciate you supporting. I am excited to have you on a TLD cast because I think you'll, and this is the storytelling playlist month. So thank you, thank you so yeah. much. I'm excited. Thank you. Have a good day. Hey, Luis, how are you? I'm good. Can you hear me okay? I can, and your cameras look great today. Yeah, I know. It's like I'm actually using like a, a mirrorless camera now, which has been really fun mm. trying to figure out how to do that. Morning, everybody. You know, the thing that was interesting about this particular episode was I really wanted to see like if there was going to be any overlap between people because I thought there was. And I've already seen a few things with myself. So first thing, my journal. Right. So I've had this. I actually looked the first date was September of 2018. So I've actually had this one for a year and a half. And I don't know if you can see it, but um, it's pretty full. In fact, I'm on my last page. Let's see one left, which is, I think that's significant. It's always like whenever you kind of wrap up a journal yeah. that always feels like really um, like you've accomplished something. But uh, so last page on that one. Yeah. So you have a journal and then also yeah. I actually have a candle, which is a total dude Ooh. candle. Yeah. It's tobacco. Julie. Okay. So here's <laughs> my thing is like my late nights working on TLDC. It's basically this and some very like mellow hip hop. And that's when I'm the most <laughs> productive is when I'm like, have this candle lit. And, um, and I listen to really chill hip hop. That's my, that's my, um, when I am doing stuff that I have to think I have to write, it's usually lo-fi beats is my Spotify playlist. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There's, um, anyway, on Spotify, there's somebody that I love listening to, um, who puts stuff together. It's called chilled cow. I don't know if you, yeah. I'll send you a link. It's just like, for yeah. some reason, I, I, I kill it when I'm working late night listening to that. Um, <laughs> yeah. So let's see. Another thing that I have is this thing, which I am surprised how much I use it, but I even take it with me when I go to cafes and stuff and all it really does. Oops. Oh, wait, I have my phone here. So, and all it is, it's like a phone thingy, right? You can rest your phone here and then you could also rest tablets on here. Um, and it just works as like, you know, I could put books on there. I got it like as a bundle yeah. with something else. And I don't know, I can't like, I don't even want to share it with my wife. Like sometimes she's like, you <laughs> one of those phone rest things. And I'm like, uh, no, <laughs> we'll have to get you one. But I actually like, well, sometimes like I have it sitting here right now. Sometimes if I need to, you know, like watch a YouTube video, like a tutorial, or if I'm just trying to catch up on some news or something, I'll just pop my phone on there and, you know, it just sits on that stand and it's pretty helpful. And then what's the other thing I have? I have a list. Oh yeah. One of the things that I have now that I didn't realize I was going to use as much as I do is I have a monitor switch because I have my work computer and then I have my TLDC computer and then I have a monitor right in the middle and I switch between oh. things like, so during the day when I'm working at, you know, doing my O'Reilly thing, I use that and then in the evenings when I move to TLDC, I switch it over and I just share the monitor between both. And that's um, been pretty helpful for me. That's, I didn't know that existed. And yeah, I have just, two work computers. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I have a regular, I have my regular one and then I have a PC just for storyline. Yeah. So I might have to get one. They're cheap. I can send you a link. It was, um, it's just, yeah, it's super simple. It's just got a button on it and you just switch. And it helps me a lot to switch between um, computers. And yeah. then if anybody who knows me, like has been around like for years, even when I was, you know, working before at the guild and stuff and would travel, I always used to have a guitar with me. Not that I'm like any good at the guitar, but... <laughs> I just like to keep guitars with me. And I was trying to think, I'm like, which is the one that I pick up all the time whenever I'm working and I need to chill out? Because the thing about music and being able to play music, I think is, um, you know, especially nowadays, if you just need to empty what's going on up here for a little while and just have some space to like, not be anything, but some vibrations, <laughs> then playing the guitar is perfect or the piano or any type of music. But um, 
I probably, I, I mean, I'm surprised, but this is the one I probably pick up the most, which is yeah. just a Korean guitar. But I play this, this one a lot. And it's because it has, you know, it's sort of semi-acoustic. And I can hear it a little better than just a regular electric. And it's not like an acoustic where I end up, if I play an acoustic, I just start playing finger style, which I don't always want to do. But I have a big selection to choose from, as you can see. You know, they're all over there. There's a bunch of them. And that's me. I got a bunch of stuff. That's, I've never heard, um, like, playing music described that way. And I think that's a really good, you just need an activity that is, you know, exactly that meditative area of hard enough that you can't focus on something else, mm -hmm. but easy enough that you don't have to focus on it. No, you pretty much when you do it, like for me anyway, you become, you, you sort of disappear into it. Like, you know, you just become you know, whatever the, the sound, you don't be, you're not anything else. I mean, there's a lot of people, I mean, you can intellectualize it, but that's not what I do. I tend to just sort of disappear. So like, for instance, you know, if there are times when I really, really like to play things like Queens of the Stone Age, like Sonar Rock or something and just disappear into it. Um, then there are other times where I like to, you just do improv and then you have to kind of be a little more technical and analytical and but then that's your a different way of kind of disappearing into it altogether because you have to put a lot of um mental effort into it but regardless it's a, you it feels like you use a completely different part of your brain yeah is there like one what's the one thing you play as soon as you pick up a guitar just to like is there one thing one like specific thing you just get out one riff you know, it's, I, <laughs> that's a good question. I would say that every time I pick up a guitar, the first chord that I play is like a G chord. And that ends up because like there are all these other fingers that end up getting to do other stuff. And then I end up just picking that. And then it moves into kind of some kind of like a blues vamp of some sort. Um, oh. But it starts out in G and then I move into blues. And then, you know, and then usually late at night is when I kind of turn it up in my headphones and I start playing really, really, really loud, um, which I love to do that. And, uh, and, you know, and then I kind of disappear. It's, it, it really is like meditation. It just gives you mm -hmm. that space to kind of like restart. And then it's after I do that, then I can go back in and start, you know, and just think again. So anyway, huh. yeah, I've added, I've added a guest. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Josie. Hi. Josie <laughs> All right. Did you want me to check? Did anybody else want to jump in? Who do we got? How about Eric or Christian? Anybody else want to jump in? Let's see. Um, Can you turn off your headphones? No, I can't turn off my headphones. Um, okay, so let me look. I can just... Um, oh, oh, go yeah, Toddy, I have one of the, those um, cooking... Um, stands to the cookbook stands, but it ne I've never found one that works well. Um, they always just kind of slip down. And then now I use my um, phone and my, my iPad so much for recipes that it's always just like my phone covered with flour off in the corner somewhere. Um, okay, I just wanted to go back through the um, chat for a minute. <laughs> Um, so, Toddy, I know that um, Christina did a journaling TLD cast, was it six months ago, a year ago? It was a while ago, um, but she's uh, she does bullet journaling, so does Myra. Um, maybe kind of, I guess, oh, yeah. close enough. But, yeah, Christiana's was really good, um, and that's part of what got me to start thinking about it as a as a thing. And even just having everything in one notebook is really nice. Um, but I found it really helpful to go back for everything. I mean, just, I know something happened in January. I just flip back. I can flip through and really quickly find it. Um, and I have had enough times where I wish I'd taken more notes on something mm -hmm. that I now try to overdo it. 
Yeah. That's, I've that's never nice been able to find a digital equivalent either. You know, mm -hmm. it just, and, and I just think that for some things, you, you, you know, it just won't exist. So, you know, mm -hmm. I, I totally recommend just having a notebook, you know, you don't, not even, I don't do the bullet journaling type of thing, but um, it's just my to-do lists and even just my own thoughts. It's mm -hmm. important for me. Yeah. How about, yeah. Kristen, do you have any like um, geeky stuff? Like anything in, do you take anything with you? Like any gadgets? I um, try, so actually my, one of the things that I was going to mention that I couldn't because my, my daughter's holding it Ew. is my um, iPad, which I have set up with a keyboard, a stand and a keyboard. Um, but I take that with me everywhere because I use it. I use sidecar for my work computer. Um, uh -huh. So I have a Mac. And so I, um, especially when I'm working out um, kind of at a client site or, I'm visiting a client, so I'm working like at a bar somewhere in town. I always have my monitor and then a second monitor. And it's not the the best. I mean, it's it works really well, but I do spend a lot of time like sitting in bars with two monitors and it looks insane. <laughs> but no one talks to you, so that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> you really look very busy. You look legit. Yes. Um yeah, so gadgets and Bluetooth. The other thing that I always have is my um, headphones, and I use um, I use my AirPods for this now. Um, I am on a lot of calls all day, um, and so I pretty much always have headphones in from for most of the day. I'd say mm -hmm. um, because then I listen to podcasts while I cook and while I go for a walk. Um, that's taken the biggest hit is I had a very, um, kind of structured podcast routine. I know when all the podcasts I like come out and I have like activity structured around them and I, now it's in chaos with wow. the isolation, just those little things. Like I don't drive anywhere, mm -hmm. so I can't listen to the <laughs> my yeah, driving podcast. Yeah, podcasts have definitely taken a hit from the lack of telecommuting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how about you used to work at cafes a lot, right? Yes. And yeah, now you don't. So has that been a big adjustment for you? I, I, I'm i curious about that because some people just went from yeah. working in an office to working at home, but you kind of like were a little bit of a nomad anyway. So. Yes. It's been really hard. Actually, what I did um, is I set up my, I got a big um, patio umbrella because we have, you know, really a small square patio and I got a folding table and I have a, I have an umbrella and a table now, so I I kind of made my own cafe because it really I need that change of scenery. I cannot sit up in this room all day. No. Um, and just like I couldn't sit in an office all day, I need to be able to change spaces for work. And there are um, you know, times when I need a big monitor. There are times when I could just use this, my iPad as a monitor. There are times when I can't have a second monitor because I'm writing and I need to be able to focus. And if I have too much space, I can't write. So I have really, I, I've, I've figured out the best environment for most of my tasks and they're all different for some reason. So it's um, really, it, that part's been really difficult. Wow. Fascinating. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. I'd like to hear like so what podcast you have like that you're missing and the same thing with Eric B if if you could if you I would love to hear like what what are the podcasts that were in your in your schedule just I had a few of mine and yeah. I've definitely I mean admittedly most of them started were kind of like sports related because that's what I would start out with work just to keep my mind just kind of churning while I code um mm -hmm. So I listen to a lot of sports stuff, especially like I'm a big Golden State Warriors fan. So since I live in the Bay Area, but I would listen to that and some news. But um, other than that, that's pretty much it, I think. Oh, yeah, I have I have all like I have some political podcasts because I'm near D.C. Um, and so those were my commuting podcasts. Mm. And then I have um, there's a podcast called My Brother, My Brother and Me. And that's just like a funny comedy podcast. Um, and it's just very enjoyable. And so that I can only, I'm only allowed to listen to it when I clean. Um, <laughs> that comes out Monday and I have to be cleaning to listen. To it. Um, 
so that um, shouldn't have taken a hit, but that's also taken a hit. Um, mm -hmm. And so then um, there's one called Reply All. That's probably my mm -hmm. um, most favorite kind of recent discovery. Mm -hmm. And that is um, really, really, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. It's very, um, it's two people and they kind of do a different big story each week mm -hmm. that is often very silly. They're often doing something serious, but they're very silly about it. Um, and one of the things they do a lot is um, like tech support for people. So people will call in with a very weird technical question. Mm -hmm. There was one recently where um, it's not even really a tech question. Someone just contacted them because they had a song stuck in their head and they couldn't figure out what song it was and the song didn't seem to exist like they knew all of the lyrics to this song from the early or mid 90s but they had no idea what song it was and no one they talked to had ever heard this song before but it was like a fully formed song in their head and so it was an hour-long podcast of them trying to find out what this song was, whether it existed, whether it was a thing that they kind of like pushed two songs together. Um, and it was fascinating. Um, that was, I'm gonna look for the thing now while That's you can you talk about <laughs> I'm gonna find it and put it in the put the link in because it's amazing. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm gonna copy link address and that okay. So um, Eric said yeah sports sermon podcasts um oh LibriVox. that's I'm cool check that yeah, i'll check that out yeah I'm yeah i do you do audiobooks Luis? um not on a regular basis i have okay. a few select ones that you know I, i'm kind of one of those people that like will subscribe to audible and then like shut it off and then resubscribe and then shut it off yeah. Yeah. Once you start getting the notifications that like, hey, you, we're we're gonna give up on you. We're gonna just start taking your credits. Yeah, that's no, true. It's true. But yeah, not yeah. not on a regular basis. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I wanted to mention Christian was saying here headphones are nice, and I splurged on a Jabra Evolve, and mm -hmm. it's fantastic. I have a I have a set of Jabras too that are probably the best headphones I've ever had. Um, and I actually I gave them to my wife because. Well, because she's my wife, but I want to get another pair for myself. They're really, really cool. Jabra <laughs> makes some good stuff. I think that's what Brian has. Um, I think those are Jabra's. Yeah. I don't know. I know they're not mine. All right. Um, yeah, I've listened to episodes of Reply, Reply All from Gilman. That's that's actually a good one. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm 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 gonna have to. I'm gonna definitely check that one out. Yes, I think you'd really, really like it. It's um, it ends up being a little bit about like how recording work, how record cards work. I guess it's the early two thousand. Yeah. So um, yeah, it, it's really interesting. Yeah, and Don and, makes um, one about libraries providing audiobooks you can download for free. Mm -hmm. That's one of the best things. We definitely take advantage of everything our local library has to offer. I mean, um, we're in there with you know getting all kinds of stuff. I I can't recommend it anymore. It's such so and good. it's amazing how they've moved so um you know with uh, um not overcast overdrive and um audiobook downloads you can really still take advantage of a library even though i know ours are closed i'm sure everyone's are closed and there are a lot of things that are shut down like my esl class is shut down um for the foreseeable future but there's so much now that a library does not in the physical space that you can still, you know, they're still an important part of the community, an important part of families, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We miss, we miss that. Yep. Um, so we get some headphone talk. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Oh, and Toddy said KEXP presents music that matters. Um, there are some, um, I know there's the, like, uh, there are some good podcasts that are about like the history of a song. Mm -hmm. Um, and oh, I think he rocks is one, um, have knowing all that. 
have you heard the broken sure. record series um with um oh what's his name no. the big producer the one who produced um the beastie boys um the, with the record label ah what is his name um i absolutely fascinating stuff oh it's called broken record i can't remember no not russell simmons rick rubin there you go buddy um thank you rick rubin has a podcast and he oh it's so good it's called broken record um just started it out um i think this year or maybe late last year but it's definitely worth worth checking out it's so fascinating um run dmc there's an interview with um with uh daryl mcdaniels in that one that just blew me away i could not stop listening to it in fact it kind of like i ended up having to like leave work and just walk for a while <laughs> listen to it it's that it's it was that good just all kinds of stuff oh yeah just yeah broken record highly recommend that one huh um so i want to do a speed round where everyone you don't have to get on the camera but just type in um the object that's you know closest to you or the object that's most meaningful to you in your office that use the most whatever criteria you want um, but just type that in chat real fast and this is my um <laughs> this was mine with her headphones she's chosen the hello kitty the hello kitty model um yeah coffee mug is a very good one i actually don't like hot coffee as much as cold coffee so i always have iced um, in a mason jar because I'm terrible. Um, coffee maker. So Eric, what kind of coffee maker do you have? Jesse, can you sit somewhere else? <laughs> um, what kind of coffee maker do you have? That's very important. Needs an X spray. <laughs> um, oh, Christiana, you have, is our orchids a recent thing for you, Christiana? Or is that a thing that you've always been get good at because i know you've been posting about them a little bit more um oh a classic mr coffee i've spent a lot of effort over the past few years trying to figure out the right coffee maker um so we had a keurig and then i didn't want to you know keep throwing away k-cups for the rest of my life and um the then we had a pour over and i'm incapable of measuring correctly with it and then um, now I have a French press that I actually really, really like, but I don't like taking time to grind coffee. So I drink cold coffee instead. Um, and photography for both Christiana and Tati. So you, do you um, hang your photography in your office um, to kind of have, have it near you? Oh, that's nice. Um, and what, Christiana, what, what do you usually take pictures of? What kind of photography do you do? And same question to Toddy. Um, what's your preferred? I know my partner for a long time when we were going to live shows did a lot of like live concert photography and it's fun, but hard. Um, oh, my Logitech trackball. So I don't use a mouse. Um, I have a mouse and I very rarely use it unless I'm using my PC for some reason. Um, does anyone else not use a mouse? Should I be using a mouse? And, oh. Oh, wow. So Tati, you, you really put your photography up. That's awesome. Um, landscape and objects, very cool. Very nice. So forgive my pictures of my stuff earlier, which was awful. Um, do you both um, ever use, um, like take photography for courses that you're developing? And has that been useful to have that skill? Um, so someone else doesn't use that. I, I have one next to me and I never, I, like two minutes into using it, I forget I have it and just use the trackpad anyway. Um, so a little scratch pad thingy so i had a welcome tablet and it broke and i did actually really really like it um but i haven't gotten another one um but i used it for everything i actually got it for my partner and then they used it as their mouse and then i was like well that's silly give it to me i'll use it right and then i just use it as my mouse too um so let's see okay 
So Christiana has not done photography for courses. Um, it's always, it's such a useful skill to be able to get the pictures that you actually need for a course instead of relying on stock photos. Um, it's very hard as we all know to rely on stock photography. <laughs> um, Cause you get, I got, um, I was working on a course and one of the comments back from the storyboard was, you know, oh, can we have a picture of this girl with like a bunch of different groups of people? And I was like, no, I'm sorry. Like they don't, they didn't take pictures of that. So um, that's um, something that I wish I was better at just so I could have that skill. Um, and oh, Emmy, you do photography as well. Um, okay, so Toddy taught photography. So what are the little scratch pad thingies, Eric, on the laptops? Are they like actual tablets where you um, use a pen or just the um, trackpad, like the, where you do that? And okay, what other objects do we have near us? And I was, I was actually really interested um, thinking of this myself because I um, had originally felt like my office and I thought so much of the value of working from home is that I don't just have my office. I also have all my stuff at home that I would enjoy. Um, so, you know, different spaces to work, like I was talking about with Louise, is also really important for me. Um, I can't just be in one room all day. So having, you know, different rooms that I can go to is really helpful. Um, and yeah, Christian, you do your own for some. Um, yeah, it's um, it's nice to sometimes have that um, for even just for their context. Like if you're taking a picture of a printer, you might as well take a picture of the printer where they know where it is. Um, and take a picture of. Do you ever use the people? Yeah, you use the people in the office that learners might recognize. Um, I've heard of that and I really, I think a lot of people enjoy it. I've also heard of it being, um, less than ideal for companies with higher turnover than they should have, because then it's a lot of people you know, like, oh, do you remember that person? Oh, do you remember this person? And then they forget to talk about the actual, or to think about the actual course. Um, so, oh, that's, um, yeah, well, Christian answers that actually. Um, I had to do a bunch of videos for a course that I was working on. Um, and I had to go somewhere so I didn't have a videographer that I could bring with me. Um, I just didn't have the travel budget for it. So I went and I did all the videos myself and I ended up just using my iPad and my phone. Um, my iPad's a little bit older, um, so the, I ended up mostly using things for my phone, but the phone videos were more than enough um, with just that and a tripod. That's really all I needed. Um, and yeah, Bing images, stock photos. Um, yeah, that's always helpful. I know um, Tracy Parrish has such a good list of free assets. No, no, stop touching <laughs> okay. me. Um, Okay, so if we are done the speed round. Oh, a pen for editing on touchscreen. I also have a touchscreen PC and I never ever use the touchscreen part of it. Um, yeah, so Eric mentioned the group turnover. Um, yeah, it really can, um, you know, you just, it brings up why that person's not there anymore. And then you start thinking about that. And then, you know, if it's a, if it's a group looking at the photo, you all, you always get that, you know, now we're just going to talk about all of the things we remember from this person. Um, so it's nice when you can do it. It's nice when the course maybe doesn't have too, too long of a shelf life. And so you can get away with that kind of thing. Um, like if it's for, you know, new software change management, I think it works well. Um, it's also nice to use their names in the um, course itself. Um, <laughs> um, that's funny, Eric. So, um, okay, 
Luis, do you have anything else you want to add? Oh, I think we got. Can you see me? Oh, I'm here. Yes. <laughs> yep. Do you have anything else you want? To, I don't know how you keep your son out of your office oh, during it, the day. This actually, my, luckily day. my office is in a, it used to be a shed. And then my wife and I, before he was born, we just like invested in like building it out. So it actually was like a legit sort of little mini office and sort of studio mm -hmm. for me. So um, he's nice. in the other room, um, probably eating his breakfast and getting ready to start start virtual school again. Another day of kindergarten. Oh, they're doing that. That's amazing that they're doing that for kindergarten. Yeah, you know the that's one great. thing that's kind of sad to me that we were talking about last night with a kindergarten mm -hmm. teacher is that she, you know, you only get to go through kindergarten once, mm -hmm. and the school year is. I mean, it's basically done. And, um, and that's a bummer. You know, we thought about, we were talking about it last night and we're like, wow, that's just, you know, she really only got to spend a few months with them and then now it's, it's over and she, you know, so that's kind of sad, but, um, yeah, now that you do, do the real work of first grade. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he'll, he'll be into it. <laughs> um, I just want to add, so, um, on Friday, I'm, we're going to do a, um, an event sort of uh, discussion about like canceled events in the industry and what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. If anybody out there that's still in is interested in participating in that, would love to have you on screen. I kind of, I'm going to go over like what has been canceled, what has been rescheduled, what has been um, kind of um, launched. Like, cause of course there are a lot of like virtual equivalents that are coming out, but I want to kind of talk about that. But I'd also like to talk about like what, What's it going to be like in a world without conferences? Like, you know, because when it comes down to it, from what I'm reading, what the analysts say, it's going to be hard to come back anytime soon. It just, you know, between, you know, what's going on with airlines and just even labor and staffing and all of that stuff, there are just so many hurdles that it's, it's going to be a while before it gets back. So I sort of would love to, you know, I'd love to have, to, to have a discussion about that. And that's, happening on Friday. I'm still working on the next playlist, which um, it's either going to be accessibility or project management. So if anybody has any, any, um, any connections in that place, everyone I've reached out to, it's like I'm either not getting a response or I'm just not hearing anything like really solid. So I'm looking for some resources for that. And then other than that, take a look at the tldc.com because that's the whole new part of the website that um, I'm going to kind of really focus a lot more around and um, and I think it kind of helps release like all of this content a little better for people. Great. Yeah, this one's not going to go to a podcast very nicely, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's, I was just, that's probably not even worth <laughs> Right. Right. And that's it. Okay. Well, all thank right. you. I'll see everyone Friday. Happy Tuesday, um, everybody. Thanks for coming in. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Christian. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. All right. Bye, guys. See ya. Thank you.